production vlog started. So I'm already in the factory right now and behind me they're making all the preparations for the manufacturing. I'm all alone at the factory this time. Oh well, I do have one guy over here named Luke. He's from Adomax uh, joining me. Um, I'm his customer so he has to make sure I'm, I'm doing a-okay here. But I'm alone as a Wooten guy because Jihoon couldn't make it to the manufacturing because of some personal reasons. He's just doing fine, don't worry about it. They're doing some preparations right now. I went to the receiving area before this recording. This is where all the goods come in and where they do a QC check in a room back there. All our goods already came in, so the QC already finished. Um, but what I'm doing right now here is testing out the sizes of the keyboard boxes for shipping. Now, usually what happens is before uh, they make the boxes, we have our sizes for the master carton, which I'll show in a second, and our keyboard box and everything, and how many can we fit on a pallet and everything, but most of the time it's just an estimation. So now I just was able to calculate what we can really, really put on a pallet, and most of the time the tolerances make a really big difference. Uh, so. That's what we just did now, is here you can see we've been testing with uh, some of the boxes, made some new measurements about how many we can fit, uh, how big the box is and how many we can fit onto a pallet. Uh, the conclusion is if we pack it this way, <laughs> then we can ship about 30 boxes uh, on a pallet for sea shipping, but for air shipping, we cannot. We have to pack it in a different way, and then we can do, I think, was 24 boxes. So that makes a big difference because the more boxes I can fit into a small area, the cheaper the shipping fees per box or per keyboard, which is a, makes a real big difference in product cost. Logistics is always a really big cost when it comes to any goods, especially if you have to ship it from far away. So anyway, so here we can see the master carton and you can see we have 10 Wooting 2 keyboards inside these are empty boxes though we haven't done any production yet so there's nothing inside right now but they can fit 10 boxes inside 10 Wooting 2 keyboards so that's uh, more than what we did with Wooting 1 before uh, because we have this new packaging style it really saves us in shipping fees that's how we prepare for the shipments now let's get into the preparing area so they already started assembling all the stabilizers of the keyboard uh, so you can see here they're doing the assembly for the caps lock stabilizer and I think what was it the shift stabilizer also and then we have a spacebar stabilizer and then if we go a little bit further we'll get to a really loud machine which is a switch assembly machine it's already doing its job right now but it's still in the testing phase they're still testing and seeing if it's going smooth or not and then they're going to put an operator onto the machine uh, to operate the machine and assemble all the switches. So to explain a little bit, everybody in the blue lab coats are operators, except for me, <laughs> not me of course, and also not Luke that's with me here. But, <clears throat> and then the people in the gray shirt are usually the engineers or the assembly line manager, which makes sure that everything is prepared and if there's an issue, they're the ones who jump in and fix. The operator's job is very simple. They just need to focus on one job only, simple job uh, that can be repeated many times and if they see something that can be improved they stick up their hand and it'll come over to improve it this is all according to a ma uh, manufacturing philosophy from japan which i made a vlog another time i don't know if it will be linked here in either case this machine is very interesting i already made some recordings of the assembly of the stabilizers i will make recordings of all the manufacturing parts and i'll make one big compilation so i'll just be jumping in between some of the parts, explaining some of the parts in this vlog and then I'll have one big compilation of the total manufacturing nearing the end of the vlog or maybe in the final vlog. This is the feeder of the switch assembly machine. You can see that all the switches are all in this bucket here and it twirls all the way up and then gets fed into this line here and then it gets shot into the assembly arms where it will jump into a second but first thing, what is really interesting here is how it picks the right switch to feed to the machine. So you can see that it first twirls all the way up. And then at this point, it's very important. The machine is vibrating a lot. There's a lot of vibration on the machine. So the switches tend to move and uh, shake 
and then they shake into a certain angle here. And as we go further, it tries to change the angle so that in the end, it will the stem is facing towards us. Now, you can see that while it's changing direction, switch that don't change the right direction, don't have the stem facing towards us, will drop down here. And then it gets fed further down and you can see another point where it changes its direction and here another point where it changes direction and as soon as it doesn't point the right direction it drops down and as we go further down the line it changes a direction another time and you see again if it doesn't face the right direction it will drop down there we had one drop down so this has to do at which side the LED and IRPT side is, if it's on the wrong side, it drops down. And then it gets to its final part down here, where it's, here it's on standby, and then it shoots, literally, to the machine. You can see it shoot away there. And now we're at the front side of the machine, and you can see here, the assembly arms. And there, the top plate, the Wooting 2 top plate, guys, yeah. And it's getting assembled. So now if we go a little bit closer, oh, I should not let my hand pass these two bars here. If I let, if I, anything passes those two bars, the machine will stop because there's somebody that's in reach of the machine. We just ended at the feeder and you can see that behind the arms over there is the feeder area where the arms can pick up the switch and then install on the top plate. So let's She's installing a new top plate right now. Let's jump into a feeding moment. You can see the switch are fed there. After it's all put into a row and it's fed, then these are hydraulic arms that pick them up and then install them onto the top plate. As you can see right here. They're already assembling a couple of keyboards to see how the production will run. They haven't started the real mass production yet. It will happen in the afternoon. It's still morning right now. You can see she installs the USB-C connector uh, on the bottom case, where after she will install the PCB on top. And this lady here will screw in the PCB, start installing the top plate. Then it moves further down the line. And here they do the keycaps. So you see here, there's a pallet of our keycaps. And then this is new. There's a display where they put the tray of keycaps on and then they can start picking and installing on to the keyboard. Now this is actually a big improvement from last time whereas they didn't have this display and it was flat. And this all has to do with the Japanese mythology Kaizen. And I have a whole vlog for the Woody one about Kaizen and Kanban. Here we have the machine that presses the keycaps more tightly onto the keyboard. Now she has to press two buttons to make sure that there's no hand or other object in between the keyboard and the machine. Then if we go to the next station, is where we check RGB. So this is where we check all the different colors RGB and if all the LEDs are working as they should be. Here we are now at our what we call wiggle station. And at the wiggle station, they test if the switches are working according to performance. So if uh, there's any like issue when you end, when you press the key till the end, and then change the switch because maybe there's a broken switch in between. Here we are at the analog testing machine. Is the keyboard goes underneath these pins, and it goes 40 steps down, checking every analog signal that the keyboard gives, and then our software there will tell us is this okay or not okay. Here she installs the little feet and then makes sure that the keyboard is straight by putting it here and wiggling it. You'll see it in the final compilation. You can also find it back in the vlog, uh, the trial production vlog. Just like this machine that you probably saw where they check if every key, is, uh, every keycap legend is as it should be or if there's any issue. Then after that station, there in the back, we have another lady or operator double checking the keyboard for final issues. And that completes the assembly line for the keyboard before it goes to packaging. And that kind of concludes the mass production at this moment. I'll have a total compilation of the mass production tomorrow or in a couple of days in a different vlog well, where you can see everything from start to end. 
So tomorrow the packaging will start, which I also want to include in that compilation. I will take a look. Now I have a couple of meetings I still need to do, uh, some double checks I need to do before tomorrow starts, and I'll see you in the next one.